All right, guys, today I'm going to show you a little something. I've got a nickel-plated revolver that's old that I want to do some stripping on to get the nickel plating off, and I actually wanted to re-blue it. So this is my uh, little setup that I've got, or that I've put together. Um, first and foremost, I want to tell you right off the bat, uh, if you choose to do this, this is your own risk. Uh, make sure you uh, comply with all the chemicals and stuff you use. Um, don't take your safety lightly and um, make sure you kind of plan ahead for stuff all right basically um, I started out I got me a 3m face shield usually you can get these on Amazon but right now I'm telling you it took me forever to find one of these because of the pandemic that's going around with the COVID-19 stuff but we're not gonna get into that but basically I got me a face shield to protect me because I'm going to be dealing with um, sulfuric acid and also, I got me a set of chemical gloves. Uh, these are rubber chemical resistant gloves. I actually ordered them off Amazon too because same thing now. You can't hardly buy even nitrile gloves nowadays. Uh, and I did buy me um, a chemical apron just to prevent any splashes from getting on my clothing or you know, burning. Now, what I have here, I can show you, is I went to Walmart and I bought this. This is a glass fish bowl. I paid like six bucks for it. Um, and what I did was I had to replace actually two batteries and two of my vehicles went bad at one time. And since I knew I was going to have to take them in and for the core, so I just took a syringe and just cut off a piece of straw and put on the end like this pop the caps off those batteries and just individually took all the um, um, battery what's called battery water out of the batteries um, which we all know battery water if you know anything about batteries is 50 percent um, sulfuric acid and 50 percent water um, so I've got my tank and solution. Now this is the old battery also. You know how it is when you go from winter to spring. Typically all your batteries are bad. So I went ahead and bought while they were on sale a new battery for my lawnmower. But this one still actually after two seasons is still running 12 volts when I run it on the voltmeter. So there's my power source. Uh, and I need a way to be able to connect them. So I had an old set of jumper cables that the cables were broken up in here on the one of the leads and when you go to start replacing these ends it's cheaper just to buy a new set of uh, emergency jumper cables because you can get them for about ten or twelve dollars and by the time you buy the components and rebuild them whatever so I have several sets of jumper cables so I took the uh, set of jumper cables and skeletonized them out and used them for another project okay so basically what I did is I just cut me two lengths of uh, this one's out of the positive wire and I put on two ends and actually heated the ends up with a torch and soldered run solder down inside here so this whole area in here is filled with solder as you can see that'll keep them from corroding and basically I just got a battery nut and bolt and another nut and bolt on this end. I did go to Lowe's and bought a couple of feet of uh, heavier gauge copper wire just so I could uh, use it to suspend my parts. Alright, so there's my way to um, connect the power. There's my way to um, have my parts. And basically you're going to need a lead plate. So what I did, I cast bullets so I have some lead laying around. So I just took the lead uh, in a ladle and just run it out in strips, connecting together, and just made me a lead plate. So basically what you'll do, I do have some acetone I'm going to use to clean the part. My test subject is going to be this old 
chrome vandium plated wrench so we're gonna um, strip it and go from there all right one other thing you want to have is you want to have I just took a plastic container filled it full of tap water that'll be to uh, take my part and submerge it in to stop the uh, acid kind of neutralize the acid so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take and open up my bottle of acetone get me some acetone on a rag and I want to make sure this part is clean get all the grease and dirty stuff off of it make sure that it's nice and dry and then we're going to hook up our cables basically I will take you want to keep this covered with some kind of, I use saran wrap, just because it'll evaporate. Uh, especially if you're going to be using it for multiple uses. And I just bent one leg of this copper wire that I've attached onto a, a lead plate. Where I could just hook it onto the bowl and have it suspended into the water. And then I'll just take... And connect my negative lead to the battery. All right, now that we've got our negative lead and we've got our uh, apron on, I'm going to connect the positive side. Thing. Make sure you have your um, PPE on, gloves and either goggles or face shield, whatever you choose to use. Make sure you have your PPE on. Basically, all I'm going to do is hook my part into my lead and just put it inside the solution. You'll see it'll gas. I'll do that for about 20 seconds or so. And then take it out. And that should be all we need. To strip the nickel off of it. Then we'll take it immediately. And dip it into the water. Just to uh, neutralize the effect of the acid and that should take the plating off I don't know if you'll be able to tell it in here or not from where it was plated get it to focus this part is still plated and this part should be a, I should be able to uh, 
sandblast our sand and remove the uh, finish down to the regular steel so I could re -blue it. And that's pretty much all it is to same process for using chrome, for removing chrome or nickel. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll work on copper, but it should. But um, I'm going to do that on all the parts for that nickel revolver, and I should be able to sand it down um, and or blast it and re-blue it.